Hello, welcome to A Favorites and Fails. I, I've been doing these more seasonally lately, so I'm gonna update you guys today on the products I've been loving and hating recently. And I have one really big fail, you guys. I'm so upset about this fail. And it was something I kind of liked until lately. But yeah, we'll get there. So, so I'm not gonna let you waste your money on it the way I did, but we'll get there. If you're new here, I'm Kelly. I post four videos a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. I did miss a few videos last week, but I will link the video down below where I kind of caught up with you guys if you wanna hear more about where I was. But let's hop into these. Okay, for the favorites. I've got a hair favorite, actually. Let's start with that. It's a bit random, but I feel the need to tell you guys about this. It is from Paul Mitchell and it is the Flexible Style Off the Press Thermal Protection Hairspray. I've mentioned before my struggle with getting my curls to hold. Let me, I'm not that in frame right now. You know, but I do have very long hair if you've watched any of my hair videos, which I don't have very many, at least not on YouTube. I do a bit on Instagram and definitely on TikTok, but my hair is long and it's naturally close to straight and it's often very humid in New York City where I live and so my curls just don't stay anymore. They stayed a little bit better when I lived in Michigan but something about here, the second I walk out the door, it is straight again. So I heard someone mention this specifically, like yes, it's a heat protectant but because it's supposed to have that like flexible hold, it helps the curls stay a little bit better. And I mean, you can think of this as a similar idea to spraying hairspray into your hair before styling it, but I'm always hesitant to do that because it can cause like you to fry your hair a little bit more if you put hairspray on first. So I like that this is a heat protectant also. You guys, this is so effective. Like I'm so glad that I picked this up. My curls last so much longer than they used to. When my friends were visiting, I had them try. They said the same thing. Now I will say there is a con to this product and that is that it it almost can leave your hair a bit snarly. So if you're using this to style day one, maybe a day or two later, you might have more tangles in your hair than you otherwise would have. I think just because it has like that hairspray like texture gives you a little bit of hold, the, the hair wants to stick together. So pros and cons, but if you are like myself and you struggle to get your curls to stay, this will make a big difference. There are other things you can do, but I feel like this is a, a helpful product. I split this video up into specific products that I'm going to mention, and I also wanna talk about just categories in general. And so for the category section, I'll tell you the products that I'm using for that, but I would recommend, you know, just shop your stash. Like you can find something you might already have. And one thing I'm loving for fall is a powder foundation. So this one I've had for a long time. It's from the, the, the brand Plain Jane. This is an indie brand. It's a black owned brand. I would highly recommend this foundation. It's very similar to the Bare Minerals Loose Powder Foundation. I wear the shade Get Loose. And you guys saw that I took this with me on my trip to Michigan. It was in my makeup basket and I was even reaching for it a lot before then. Something about the seasonal change, I'm really into like a matte face right now. I loved a really dewy look in the summer. Now as we move into fall, I'm liking something with like no highlight like I have on today. I don't have any highlight. A little bit more flat almost, but like the fun powdery, maybe almost 90s inspired type of look. And I've been really enjoying powder foundation for that. I do have a video all about my favorite and least favorite powder foundation. So I can leave it linked down below. This is the product in particular that I've been reaching for, but I would say this favorite is more just general powder foundations. I have two more like general favorites, but let's let's hop back to products, you know, keep you guys on your toes. I have two cream bronzers to recommend, one at a high-end price point and one at a drugstore price point. And I kind of like the, the drugstore one a little bit more, but the high-end one is so good that I have to talk about it. And it is from Merit. This is called the Bronze Balm. Now I have this in the shade Quince, and this is extremely light. This is probably the lightest cream bronzer that I've really found from a makeup brand. A lot of times, you can see I'm, I'm pretty pale, a lot of times, even light shades and bronzers, like the other one I'm gonna show you, don't appear that light. So 
First of all, I would highly recommend this if you're very fair and you have a hard time finding a bronzer that's light enough for you. I think you'll really enjoy this. But in addition to that, the formula is so effortless to blend out. First of all, I'm not even normally a fan of a stick cream bronzer. And you guys know I say that a lot because I don't like to draw directly onto my skin. I find that that process usually, is it raining? Is it raining? No. That process usually disrupts my foundation. Not with this one. Not with this one. It is so creamy and emollient, but it's not too creamy and emollient where it looks like too balmy on the skin. They really perfected this formula. It glides across the skin. Even the shape right here, I think, is perfect for drawing onto the skin because it's more of an oval. So you can apply it um, this way and have a thicker line or you can take it on the side do something a bit thinner you can kind of get the nose if you like to um, bronze and contour that area this is a good one it has been quite hyped up and I, I, I agree with the hype another one highly recommend at a drugstore price point this is from makeup revolution it is their cream bronzer. Now, this is also in the shade light, and let me even do a shade comparison for you guys. You actually cannot tell when I'm when I'm right here. I held them up just now, and I'm like, they actually look similar there. So instead, editing Kelly's gonna pop some side-by-side -side swatches on so you guys can see the difference in the tones. The Makeup Revolution one, a little bit darker. Though, the formula shears out so well that I don't have any issues blending it out even though it is a bit darker. Actually, I'm realizing now I'm not wearing either of these today and it is the first time in a long time that I haven't worn either of these. I did take this one also with me on my Michigan trip. The formula of this, you guys, it reminds me a lot of the Tarte Seychelles Cream Bronzer. Also kind of similar to the Cream Bronzer from Rose Ink. I wanna test this out with both of those formulas kind of side by side and maybe see which one it is the most similar to but it feels and performs like a high-end cream bronzer honestly i find it a little bit easier to use than a lot of high-end cream bronzers okay and then once you apply that and you want to set it down again for the matte look that i'm into right now the sigma loose setting powder you guys I'm not much of a loose setting powder person. I very much prefer a pressed setting powder. Oftentimes, loose formulas like this, I find, look a bit heavy. That's when they look powdery. That's when it looks cakey. That's when it looks like makeup. But something about this is so blurring. Whenever I use this on camera in like a makeup tutorial or like a get right with me because I don't really do tutorials, but when I use this on camera, you guys always comment that you're shocked at how blurring this is. So I have it on today. And I want to note, I'm filming in natural light. My forehead is lumpy right now. I'm going to do somewhat of a skin update pretty soon here because I have my one year tretinoin anniversary coming up. So I'm going to do a video about that and then I'll share some skin updates. But you know, I've been struggling a bit with my skin. But this saves the day. I swear I dusted over it. And I mean, yeah, the texture is still there. If, if it's texture, you're going to see it. But it is so minimized because of this product. I highly recommend this pressed powder. It is very, or no, loose powder, it's a loose powder. Like it feels almost buttery to the touch. It's so smooth, not buttery. That word is overused. I think a better word to describe this is almost like velvet. I love it. I have a throwback favorite. This has been a favorite of mine for a long time, but I've been reaching for it again lately. Like, I feel like I always fall back in love with this. I might stop for a bit, but I always come back to this. And it is a um, an eyeliner. <laughs> I'm wearing it in my waterline today. I don't have a ton of this on right now, but this shade, I'll, I'll tell you in a second, but this shade makes brown eyes twinkle so much. Brown eyes, honestly, green eyes, blue eyes, it just makes eyes sparkle. So this is from Koki. It's drugstore, it's very affordable. I've had it for a long time and I've sharpened it so many times and I feel like I still have a ton of product left. The shade is called Gilded Gold. Now I like this because I don't usually like anything too dark in my waterline. I think because I have brown eyes and like, somewhat like lighter eyebrows and whatnot when i'm wearing um a really dark eyeliner it, it just looks like a lot 
according to me on myself. So I like wearing something a bit more mid-toned like this in my waterline to still get that sultry effect without it feeling too harsh. So especially I would say if you maybe have red hair, if you have like very blonde hair and you feel like sometimes even a brown eyeliner in your waterline can feel too intense, try this. It's like a medium gold. All right, I have been hanging on to the last bit of summer for a while now like if for me i love fall like i love fall so much but i just have not been ready for summer to be over but lately you know i've been kind of letting myself lean into fall it is technically fall now so i've swapped out my candles for some fall scents i swapped out my perfumes for fall scents so let's talk about both my fall fragrance i initially bought this actually last not last, earlier this year, in May, no, March. And it is the shade Vanilla Woods from The Seven Virtues. And this scent, I think, wears well in winter or fall, though you could definitely wear it in summer and spring, and I did both. But it's, it's very much like your typical fall scent. It is vanilla-based, though it doesn't smell as like vanilla forward as a lot of other vanilla scents do. I've, I usually stray away from vanilla fragrances because I find a lot of them just don't feel as mature to me. They remind me of something I would have worn as like a body spray in middle school. I feel like it's hard to make a vanilla that smells luxurious, but this one does. The keynotes are pear, rose, and vanilla. This just like smells like a hug to me. I, I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna apply some right now. Ooh, okay, my other like category favorite, brown mascara. So this is specifically the one I'm going to mention, but I would say brown mascara as a whole, it does not have to be this one, but this is the one I've been wearing lately. This is by CoverGirl, it is their Flourish Mascara. It's part of the Lash Blast line. And you guys saw me uh, reviewing this in my top five drugstore mascara videos, top five drugstore mascaras video, recently this is one of the best mascaras for separation if you want a natural lash that is very very separated it's going to grip onto every individual eyelash the wand on this is perfect for that and it also does come in a black so if you prefer something a bit more intense for your mascara you will probably love the black shade also but lately I've been into a brown. And again, I think because I do have lighter eyebrows and now I have a lot more blonde in my hair, sometimes a black mascara can feel like a lot on myself. And there are days where I'm going for a slightly more natural look and I'm loving a brown. Though today, that wasn't the case. Oh, oh, the other fall scent. Okay, I'm skipping around. We're going in a random order. I'm keeping you on your toes, but it is, from Ulta Beauty. Okay, so the Ulta Beauty brand has candles, and let me tell you, I used to be a hater. So I bought a Christmas scented candle, well, it was like a peppermint candle, last winter. It was so bad, it was so bad, and I was turned off thinking, okay, all the Ulta brand candles are trash. And as you guys know, I'm in the Ulta Beauty Collective for 2022, so I've been able to receive and test out a lot of products from Ulta, and they send me a lot of things from their in-house brand. I'm, I'm making this story like so long. Anyways, months ago, they sent me another candle. It was the cotton scent. I was shocked, it was so good, I loved it. So I've been trying to give them another chance because a lot of you guys even told me when I mentioned it last winter, you were like, no, wait, that you just got a bad candle. A lot of their candles are good. So anyways, fast forward to now. I picked up three fall scents and this is the shade Pumpkin Spice. You guys, okay, Apple Crisp is very good too, but if you want that just like classic fall scent, this is very good. It reminds me of like a Bath and Body Works candle. This scent is not necessarily the most like dynamic and sophisticated, but it is what I think of when I think of fall and Full prices are $20, so, mm, I mean, for a large three-wick candle, that's an average price, but it's not, like, a great deal. However, at the time I'm filming this, and I think for a few more days, they're half off, so you can get them for $10. So I already had two, and then the other day I bought another one. This is the scent I like the most. I feel like the sun is moving in and out. I'm getting brighter. I'm getting darker. That is, that's the struggle with natural light, but I've really been loving filming with natural light lately. It, 
I don't know. I, I enjoy it. It's fun. I'm sitting on my bed, as I've said in all of my videos that I filmed in natural light, and it, it reminds me of old school YouTube, and I just love that vibe. So with that, let's talk about the fails. I have, first of all, a hair fail, and it is the biggest fail of this whole video, you guys. I'm like angry about it. And then I have a makeup fail, which we'll get into. But let me start with the hair fail. Hair, hair, I can't even talk. The hair fail. This straightener from T3, I bought less than a year ago. And how much was it? Hold on. I looked this up the other day because I was looking through my Sephora orders. I was like, maybe I've had this longer than that. But I went back into my orders. I ordered it on October the 8th. So like has not even been a year. It was $150, which even at the time I'm like, uh, Kelly, you could probably buy a cheaper straightener and get the same effect. But I was like, no, I like T3 products. Let me buy this. Let me invest. And when I bought it, I did see some reviews of people saying, oh, it stopped working for me very quickly. And I still, like, I didn't think much of it. I was like, oh, you know, maybe they just got a lemon. Well, apparently I did too because it's been less than a year. And the other day was when I was on my trip. You guys, this was all I brought. I brought this and then some Velcro rollers so I could do like a fake blowout type of look. But I didn't have any other hot tools. And halfway through the trip, it stopped working. So I couldn't really do my hair. And for $150, I feel like this should work minimum for a year, like less than a year, that's pretty ridiculous. And because I saw a lot of other reviews saying the same thing, I feel like I have to give you guys a warning. Honestly, I've got a lot from T3. I have that I purchased myself. I have their hot rollers that I purchased myself and I have two curling irons from them that they sent me. You know what? Mm, some of them I just don't think are worth it. I love my curling irons from them. The curling irons I think are good. This straightener though stopped working right away and my, um, my hot rollers from T3, they're fine. But again, I don't think they were worth the price. So I, I feel like I needed to give that warning. Let's talk about a makeup fail. It's from one of my favorite brands, Essence. And oh, actually I just did a top five, bottom five with Essence. So I can leave that link down below if you missed it. But I recently picked up their brow like a boss brow gel. And this is, this is a weird thing, okay? It's an interesting product. When I purchased it, I was anticipating almost something like a brow marker and it is not that. This is like a paint almost. It is very thin and liquidy and you have an angled brush to apply it. Now the angled brush that they put on this is so thick and chunky and not that helpful like getting a defined application. So I would say that's the first tricky point because the formula is so liquidy and the brush is so large, you don't have a lot of control of where it's going. And once this gets on your skin, it's almost impossible to get this not to look like the 2016 Instagram block eyebrows. Like there's just no feathering this out. It does, it does give you really good hold in your brows. If you exclusively keep this on the brow hairs, it does hold them in place rather well. For me, it's very easy to miss the hair and get this onto the skin. And then once you do, it just looks kind of globby to be real. Okay, those are the best and worst products I've tried recently. If you have tried any of these out, let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.